Food for Mood with Dr. Judy Wortman. Judy joins us on a Thursday morning, and uh, we talk about food and the various things about food. Good morning, Dr. Wortman. Good morning to both of you, and a lovely beginning of September. That's true. Is well, it just gets a dark. preview of fall, see if the nice parts of fall. Okay, we'll take it. <laughs> All right. But but September also brings with it, um, as we you know, any of our anybody knows from just reading the paper, uh, the news of one's locality, beginning of school, colleges, college kids are back. Uh, people are told to uh, now go back to their offices. You don't you don't work remotely as they had been during the summer and certainly previous months. And with that, all of that comes stress, the stress of too much to do, you know, too little time, and all the distresses that sort of lurk in our closets, you know, sickness and uh, financial problems and mother-in-law is coming to visit and all that, uh, that we somehow can't escape. And one of the things, Jill, that I, I notice is that if you go into any chain drugstore like a CVS or Walgreens, or you go on the Internet, you will see almost an uncountable number of remedies for stress. And it's really curious because, um, to begin with, the idea of even responding to situations by saying, as many of us do almost all the time, oh, I am so stressed today. The whole concept of being stressed, and stressed not just because a lion is coming and eating your dinner, or maybe you are the dinner, but stress because of uh, thing, problems that you can't solve or problems that are persistent. That whole concept really didn't enter the popular uh, thought until the 1950s, until 1950, actually. There was an endocrinologist named Hans Selig who described in 1936 as a, a resident in a hospital in Canada the fact that many patients who were going through or had gone through operations or serious medical issues seemed to have some kind of a biological response to what was happening to them and it was something that you could not really define by uh, an organ failure or organ disorder but you know, they seemed to lose interest in their surroundings they wanted to sleep they didn't feel like eating when they were told they could leave the hospital and go back to work they really didn't want to sort of a shutdown of their responses to the environment but it, it took a couple of more decades before the whole idea that you could feel differently your body your mind your your, your emotions because of what was going on around you all defined by the word stress really was not popular and you know, it's interesting when you think about it, Jill, when you think about all the calamities that happened to mankind since you know, he first or she first arrived on this earth, nobody bothered using that word stress. And I was thinking about all the tragedies that we read about, you know, with Shakespeare or certainly historical calamities. You don't hear anybody in Macbeth saying, oh, my goodness, I'm just so stressed. You just killed, you know, my boyfriend or something. And I... Uh, and yet, again, it's a, a term that we're very, very familiar with. So if you feel, and many, again, many, many people do, that you are living a stressful life, all you have to do is go on the Internet or into a, a pharmacy, and you will find an unbelievable number and types of remedies. I mean, they're the obvious ones like, oh, you should be taking more magnesium and more B12 and more potassium and more zinc and more vitamin C. Um, and you should be uh, you know, eating certain fruits and vegetables to relieve your stress. But more interestingly, you can buy an inhaler, and the inhaler instructions will say, exhale as much carbon dioxide as you can, because if you keep it in your lungs, you will feel stressed. And then you inhale, one is your choice, one of three fragrances that should make you feel more relaxed. Or you can get a headband, this is actually more expensive, and put it on your head, and it will... Um, it, it will send forth gentle vibrations, and the vibrations are supposed to be in tune with your heartbeat and your pulse and your breathing. And just by having those vibrations on your on your skin, you will feel less stressed. Or there are creams that you can rub on your skin that contain herbs from various exotic places that will simply uh, re relieve your stress simply by being absorbed through the skin. Uh, and on and over, it's even... <laughs> <laughs> There's even a, a, a kind of a, a, a dough. I guess it must be a grown-up version of Play-Doh mm -hmm. that you can buy and you can knead, you know, the way you would real dough. Um, and by that kneading, 
um, you're getting some of that tension out of your body. I mean, one could, of course, ask, well, why don't you just simply make bread? But that's not a question that came up in the advertisement for the particular product. So all these, and there's so many more, are stress relievers. But, you know, but I think all these um, preparations and, and various devices don't really talk about are sort of the natural ways that you can relieve stress. And one, very obviously, is to try to decrease it. Um, but try to give yourself a little time to uh, exercise. That's an obvious way of releasing stress. My favorite, and one of my favorite, two of my favorites are playing with my dog and complaining. I think complaining is really a great stress reliever. But playing my dog really comes in first or second. Um, and of course, the, the most natural one, and we've talked about this a long time for a long time, is by increasing serotonin simply by eating some carbohydrate and waiting maybe twenty or thirty minutes. And it won't take away the stress. It won't take away the cause of the stress, but it may make it possible to cope with the stress a little better. Uh, but the other thing that occurred to me while I was researching this is maybe we should just get rid of the term because it no longer really has any real meaning. Of course, one is horribly stressed if you're dealing with a, you know, a medical emergency or you're dealing with, like they did you know, in Mississippi, with terrible floods or, or certainly in Pakistan. These are real stressful situations or you're in the Ukraine or wherever in the world where there's some horrible catastrophe going on, maybe we should really say the term stress for something that really means it. That would be an interesting concept. I'm actually listening to you, and I don't know how much time we have, but I'm really curious. When, we've got a minute. So here, here, here is my question. All right? When did yeah. stress become a thing? Become a what? A thing. When did stress I become... That's when... I mean, well, it seems like a long time ago for many people. No, but, but still... That, because and we we, we, we we can do history from there another time. But that's it's like people should understand that it it's it's official. It was sanctioned. Prior to that, we didn't have it. We just coped. <laughs> that's exactly right. That's exactly right. And you know, there was you know, there is a saying that, you know, God gives you only those things that you can bear. Well, I don't think anybody who feels stressed would say, no, 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 that's not really true. <laughs> uh, you know, because, and, and, and what, what really made me want to talk about this is hearing people, you know, let's say the, the kids come back to school, and so you, you walk down the street and you see two college kids, and they say, oh, I'm so stressed. I'm not sure what course I'm going to take. Oh, I'm so stressed. My boyfriend didn't call this weekend. Oh, I'm so stressed. You know, my roommate didn't, I don't know, something or another, snored last night. And I'm thinking, come on, you don't really have any idea what stress is. And yet we use that word like saying, oh, I'm so depressed. No, you're probably not depressed, because if you are, you probably wouldn't even say it. I mean, it's that we have taken the meaning out of these words. And when you really are stressed, I mean, I had a friend who was sure that her computer was taken over by one of those scammers, hackers, you know, they say, if you don't pay a ransom, you know, everything is going to be wiped out on your computer, and she really didn't know what to do when there was flashing lights and sounds. She told me, she finally called the IT department of her university, and they handled it for her, but she said, she said I nearly fainted. She said, I, they were going to tell, they were going to wipe out my bank account. She said, I was, you know, hyperventilating. I was sweating. I was trembling. You know, I really didn't know that I could stand up. That is stress, right. and That's we've had more of it. To be continued, but... Food for mood. She still gets off the phone really fast. Faster than anybody I know. Uh, of course, you can hear Judy right here on Robin Hood Radio uh, live on Thursday mornings before uh, the Lakeville Journal Report, and also uh, on demand, robinhoodradio.com on demand.